The kitchen is messy, so today we will be pipe claying. But the kitchen is actually even more messy because I've recorded this after. Oops. So what is pipe claying? Pipe claying is a general term used for a method that was used by British soldiers in the 18th and 19th century to keep their belting and accoutrements white. There is no one general way to pipe clay. There is a plethora of recipes and different ways of doing it. And today, we'll be trying two of them. The first is from The Discipline of the Light Horse, written by Captain Robert Hind of the Royal Regiment of Foresters, Light Dragoons, published in January of 1778. The second recipe that we'll be using is from The Private Soldiers and Militiamen's Friend by Henry Trenchard, Sergeant Major of the Oxfordshire Militia, published in September of 1786. Now, before we get into the recipes themselves, there are a few things that are good to have on hand in the process of pipe clang. The first one is a mask. This is good to have on hand when you're actually measuring out the pipe clay and putting it into a bowl as it's always a good practice to, to protect your lungs from that particulate matter. If you don't know where to get a mask after two years of pandemic, I can't help you there. Next, you'll need a brush. Any sort of brush will do. You'll also want a sponge. A natural one is preferable for obvious reasons. And lastly, you will want a glass bottle. In this instance, this is just a black glass bottle. Oh, hell. Don't you know me? That is a black bottle. I assure you, my lord, that is a black bottle and you are drinking porter from it. <sighs> this is in the finishing step to burnish off the pipe clang to give it a nice glossy finish. Now, all the ingredients that are used in pipe clang are easily obtainable either at your local store or online. But the big thing, which is the base of pipe clang, which is where it gets its name from, is the pipe clay. Now, what I'm using is a clay called kaolin. Pretty common, you can find it almost anywhere online from different places. I happen to be using it because a friend of mine recommended it, so that's what I have. But in period accounts, you do get them using all different sorts of clay for the process of pipe clay. Anyway, let's get into the recipes, or as the 18th century people would call them, the receipts. Now, the first recipe that we'll be using today for pipe clang is the one from Captain Hind from 1778, and his recipe reads, A receipt for the white belts. Take one and a half pounds of pipe clay, three quarts of water, one quarter pounds of best glue, a quarter of a pound of white soap, boil the soap and glue first till dissolved, then mix with pipe clay and boil all together for a quarter of an hour. When cold, put it on with a sponge in the usual manner. And when dry, rub it with a glass bottle. As you can see, it's relatively straightforward. Though in great 18th century lingo, it says, in the usual manner. Because I know exactly what the usual manner is. Uh, which I seems to be that that is the usual manner. So anyway, let's get started on this recipe. One thing to note is that because this is the 18th century, I will be using a natural glue. This just happens to be a hide glue that I purchased from a manufacturer that sells glue for classical instrument making. Don't really want to use modern petrochemical things as that's not what they had then. So hide glue. And this is the most natural soap that we had in the house. This is a Castile soap that is made from olive oil. Again, not made from any sort of refined petrochemical product. Um, in one of the B-roll sections that I have in here, I have the whole block, but I have cut it up to hopefully let it dissolve easier in the mixture. So we'll see how this solution goes. So now let's actually make the stuff. Sight and sound check of this little setup here. We're gonna see if this is ready to rock and roll. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> Now, in Heinz's recipe, he says that we should boil the soap and the glue together until they are dissolved with the water. So that's what we're going to do now. So first, we uh, have to put the water in. This has been preheated in the kettle. Wait, wait, we can make it an ASMR video. And the water goes hot. 
Anyway, so now that the water's in here, let's turn on and ignite the stove. And we're going to put in the hide glue. Followed by the soap. And now that the soap and the hide glue is in here, we're gonna turn it into some sort of solution. So we're gonna to have to let it boil. So I will come back when it is boiling and dissolved. I realized from the last shot that my face was looking awfully dark because I didn't move the lighting setup. So that's fun. Woohoo! I realize that some of you may have wanted to see what was going on as the soap and the hide glue were dissolving in the water. So anyway, this is what it's looking like. Just have a very inauthentic um, spatula here and we're just, um, just stirring it in. It literally looks like you would expect glue dissolving in water with soap. Nothing to see here, this is an HBO. So, the glue and the soap have dissolved, and it looks something like this. Look at that. Literally just looks like brown water. How exhilarating, huh? How exhilarating. It's time to add the pipe clay. Since we might have some dust, I have put the mask on. Though you can apparently eat this stuff, but I, um... Not sure I want to try that. So then afterward, you know, Trenchard says just put it in. So, um, let's put it in here. Excuse me, Hind. This is Hind's recipe. Is to mix in the pipe clay. So we'll mix in the pipe clay. Literally just looks like flour. That's kind of cool. Kind of just like making pancake batter. Actually, let me move the camera and maybe you can see this. Right, so here it is. This is, uh, it looks like chowder or something. Not the chowder you want to eat though, because it probably wouldn't taste the best. little thick as you can see the pipe clay comes up like that so I guess we'll have to just keep stirring and see how it goes. Hind says to let it boil for a quarter of an hour so it is now 6 30 we will let it boil for a quarter of an hour and we'll see how it goes. Um, looks like it wants to boil over here. Oh man that doesn't really smell really good. Oh so uh, we'll wait the quarter of an hour and see uh, what we end up with. Um, would imagine stirring it intermittently is probably a good idea. We're two thirds of the way through the time and I've been stirring it a little bit here and there. And there's still clumps and stuff. There's not as much. But again, I have no idea what the, the base is that we're, we're looking for. So that might just be how it is. I definitely though would have added the pipe clay a little bit uh, slower. But not sure that would have helped, but definitely just would have so it is boiled for a quarter of an hour, like Hind has said. Now let's move on to Trenchard's recipe and let this one cool down. Now the second recipe by Sergeant Major Trenchard reads, to color your accoutrements, if white, take one pound of pipe clay, half an ounce of alum, half an ounce of starch, and a little indigo. Mix there well with clean water. The first coat to be laid on with a brush and the second with a sponge. So the next one for Trenchard, he wants us just to mix all the ingredients together and that's it. Um, but I will be using some hot water. He just says clean water. Um, I just want to make sure that the starch and the alum, which is aluminum sulfate, dissolve properly. And then we'll just mix it all together. But we're not going to be using any heat. I'm just here at the stove because we the camera set up at the stove and this pot is big and won't go everywhere. So let's go.
We'll just uh, mix it in here so that it dissolves. It will be interesting to see the binding agent of this one is the alum and the starch. I wonder how this will compare to the glue and the soap version. Now this time as I sprinkled it in versus just dumping it in, which I don't know why I did last time, that's not a technique you use for anything, um, this just cleanly dissolved into it and it is basically just a solution. So that's, that's the way to do it, don't dump it in. Not sure why I didn't do that before. Now the one last thing we have to add is the indigo. So it says to add a little indigo, that's not very specific, so we will put just a little bit in, a little. Oh, that smells really good. It smells like tea. What well, is a plant, so that, that explains why. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're using indigo is that it is a green powder, even though indigo is a blue color when you're dyeing. The reason for that is when you're using it, straight out of the package, it needs to oxidize in order for it to turn blue, so don't freak out. It's okay, no big deal. We will just mix it in, like so. And as you see, this is so much smoother than the last one. Um, we probably should have done that before, just don't dump it in. Not sure what I was thinking. So we are now going to let them stoop for an indefinite amount of time. We'll come back to them and we're gonna see how they do. But right now, this is what Heinz recipe looks like, and this is what Trenchard's recipe looks like. Right now, the Hind recipe is a little whiter, and this one is a little more yellow. Not sure why, as that one here actually has more stuff in it. Um, but who knows? This might just be because it also dissolved a little bit better. So anyway, we'll come back to it, and I will let you know how it goes, and we will try it on some leather and see what it looks like. Anyway, until then, toodles. So we are on day two of the pipe clang project. If we look at Heinz here, it has pretty much stayed together and is not separating like the one from Trenchard's is. It is pretty much just looking like a creamy mess. I don't know what we'd want to call it, but it seems to have stayed together well. A little bit of sediment on the bottom, but the Trenchard one is separating and we'll see how it works. I have a little more hope for the one of Hind but we'll see how it goes. Let's move the camera and try it out. So, we are just about ready to apply the pipe clay solution to the leather, but there are a few notes that I wanted to bring up before we get there. So when we look at Heinz recipe here, it is kind of like this yogurt consistency, probably because of the glue and the other stuff that we put in it. But if you look at Trenchard's here, it is very much this milky consistency with little bits of indigo floating at the top. Now, we use the same ratio of water that we used in Heinz recipe because Trenchard didn't really tell us how much water we should be using. Um, but probably in the future, if I was to remake this recipe, I would use less water because this is just too much. It's milky, it's creamy, it's just probably shouldn't be like that. I don't know how it's going to go on. But for the Hind one here, it'd probably be better maybe to add a little more water because it does seem like it's awfully thick, but we'll see when we apply it to the leather. Anyway, we'll move the camera and you can see how they both go on. So the first recipe that we're going to try here is the one from Captain Thomas Hind from 1778. Hind says to, when cold, put it on with a sponge in the usual manner. Again, the usual manner, we don't know what that is, but he wants us to apply it with a sponge. So I have the natural sponge here, and we're going to just try sponging it on and see how it goes. So let's take the pipe cling product here and just sponge it on in the usual manner. I guess we're gonna create the usual manner right now. I don't know if we should dab or we should just be rubbing it back and forth. He is 
quite unspecific about it. clear how much we should be putting on so we'll just <laughs> do what feels right I'd imagine if your belting was very dirty and something like that you'd probably want to put more on at least to make the dirt and gunk go away anyway we've pretty much sponged that on so why don't we let that dry like hind says and move on to the next one so the next recipe that we have here is from The Private Soldier and Militiaman's Friend by Henry Chenchard from 1786. And he says that we should apply it in the following manner. To be laid on with a brush, and the second with a sponge, and before quite dry, rub the belt with a smooth glass bottle, which gives it a fine gloss. So let's try applying the first coat here with the brush, like Mr. Trenchard says, and we'll see how it goes. We'll try it with this institutional drink here that we have made. Again, I think it would probably be better if we used less water. This might be a more successful solution. In case anyone is wondering, these are just scrap pieces of leather that I'm using from the belt making process. And actually, it is going on better than I had expected. It is going on pretty smooth and seems like it is absorbing into the leather. Now, what is hard for me to do is to tell you how my hand is feeling as this is the medium of video. And there's actually a little bit of tension on the brush, so I guess it might actually be doing something. And it is seemingly absorbing, so maybe this is actually right. Who knows? Now. He does say before that we should put a second coat on, but he is not very clear how long to wait. So I guess we'll give it a few minutes before we try sponging some on, and we will go from there and then try burnishing these with the glass bottles. So it's only been a couple of minutes, and the recipe from Hind seems to have pretty much dried. Um, the only thing you'll notice here is that it seems to have picked up a bit of stuff from the sponge, though. If you were using a sponge in some sort of garrison station or on the field, probably would have picked up stuff too, so that's probably okay. Anyway, next in Hein's recipe, he says that we should burnish it with a glass bottle. He doesn't say we should apply a second coat or anything like that, so we're going to try burnishing it with the glass bottle. Again, we have some more captivating HBO television here. So we have, I think, successfully burnished it. It is definitely smoother now in comparison to what it was before. So anyway, I guess we'll let it dry for an indefinite amount of time and we'll come back to it to see if the color changes or anything. Right now it's relatively white. We have a few streaks here and there. So let's put it aside before we get to any conclusions about this process. So we are back to Trenchard's recipe here. He does not specify how long we should have in between putting on the two coats. He only says how long between putting on the final coat and burnishing it with the bottle. So anyway, before burnishing with the bottle, he says it shouldn't be quite dry. And this isn't quite dry, so we're going to use that standard. So anyway, let's try putting the second coat on with the sponge and see how it goes. Not totally sure why he wants one with the sponge and one with the brush. Maybe the sponge gives it a little bit of a smoother application, which seemingly is what is happening here. Not sure how much of a coat we should be putting on, 
We'll just do what seems right at this point. And that is the second coat. So we will let it dry for a few minutes more before it is quite dry. And then we will try burnishing it with the bottle. So we have now let Trenchard's recipe dry on the leather a little bit, though he again doesn't want us to let it completely dry because we still need to burnish the leather. So now we're going to try burnishing the finish and see how it goes. He says it should provide it with a fine gloss. So let's see what it does. Flip it over and get the other side of the leather. You can easily see how on the belting this would be easy, though I'm not sure how on the actual frogs and stuff how this would work, but... So it has burnished it actually. It's a lot smoother to the touch and does have a slight bit of a gloss to it. So the bottle really does seem to work. Now, before we get into how this actually looks, we're gonna let it dry for an hour or two. So that way we can make sure we're really seeing how this problem, or rather this solution, works. Action. So my buddy Josh and I have just come in from taking kit photos, which is why the wardrobe has changed while we were letting these little pieces of leather here dry. And I think him and I are actually pretty stunned by the results of this experiment. I know for myself, this has been significantly more successful than, than I would have imagined. They've come out stupendously. Now, one of the things I know that is sometimes brought up about pipe claying is that, well, is it gonna wear off on your uniform? And I can safely say I've been playing with these and the one from Hind does absolutely nothing. It, it stays on, probably because this one has the glue and soap in it. Now, the one from Trenchard does give off a little bit of a powder on it, as you can see here, and I'll put some B-roll in, but it is hardly noticeable. And the thing about it is, that side isn't going to be touching your coat. It's going to be on the outside. And even if it was, it's it's negligible because you just wipe it away and it's it's gone. So I would say if you are treating your own belting at home, whether it be buff or it is some sort of other improper leather, just do it because this works. It looks right. It feels right. It doesn't ruin your uniform. It's, it's perfect. I don't know why you would use anything else really. Now I went into this with a few concerns that, oh, maybe this isn't practical, but it really is. Everything about it is practical. It is super easy to do. You can obtain the materials basically anywhere online. It's it's super easy to get into. So I don't see why you wouldn't. The stuff behind me here, as you see, I've made these huge batches for just about 20 to $30. And that will probably complete a bunch of guys belting for the next 18 years or something like that. It's probably a little extreme. So everything about it really speaks to being a practical thing. And one thing to add is if you're at an event, this is an easy interp to do for the uh, the public. The public, I think, would love to see something like this. So if you're out in the, you know, you're at an event and, oh man, we gotta do something? Whiten your belting with pipe clay. The public would love to see it. You know, there are a lot of things we do as reenactors that I don't think are very captivating and engaging to the public. This, I think, is a great one. They learn something, and hell, you could even have the public join in on it. So why not do it? This is also a great way for treating your belting because there are no harsh chemicals and it's really, it's not gonna dry out the leather. Now, a popular thing that is done for whitening belting is using uncut latex paint. Personally, from seeing this and seeing some latex painted belting, do this, do not use the latex paint if you're not gonna cut it with anything. Because as, we, as you see here from this belt that I have, the latex paint is very hard on the belting. It just turns into this cracked mess. And the pipe claying, whether when it does crack, it's easy to get off and you can easily retreat it. But this, this just doesn't look very soldierly. I'm, I'm sorry. Just, just, if you are going to use latex paint, cut it with something, whether it's water, leather treatment, anything like that. And the color of this is slightly more stony than it is white. So if you can get that, definitely do it. There is a guy in our regiment who does it and he uses some 
acrylic paint with a leather preservative. And I think that is the best compromise if you aren't gonna pipe clay because it gives a good stony color and does protect the leather without ruining it, drying it out, etc. Little addendum, if you don't have the resources to pipe clay, another good compromise is using shoe care products. They'll absorb better, they're more flexible, and they won't layer on top of each other like uncut paint. So those are the only two things that I think are acceptable, in my opinion, if you're gonna be treating belting. Just do it right, it's so easy, you know, it's cheap, inexpensive, and it looks great. So one thing I didn't mention while making the main takes of this cut, and I think it's important to mention is that if you have generally in the past used paint for your belting, when you're using this method, it doesn't look like paint. It looks like pipe clay because it's pipe clay. So if you try it out and you're like, oh my God, it doesn't look thick enough. Don't worry, it's pipe clay. It's not paint. So it's just, just takes a little getting used to. I know I had to get used to it here while I was making this video. It's it definitely looks different at first. You have a little bit of a panic attack. So don't even worry about it. It's gonna go fine. So one thing to keep in mind in this whole process is the one from Hind definitely has a more shiny finish than the one from Trenchard. Um, but the Trenchard one doesn't hasn't really picked up as much gunk as the one from Hind has. And I'm sure back then in the 18th century, their stuff isn't necessarily gonna be clean. So it's gonna pick up a little bit of residue. But I think both of them look stupendous. So this has been the video on pipe claying. It's super easy, super doable, looks great. Try it out today. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. And thanks for watching this video. Cheers, everyone.